welcome to Build Up, the show about shows between the shows. We have Constance Zimmer and Craig Bierko up next to talk about the final season of Unreal, which is available on Hulu right now. Yes, and I love Unreal because I love reality TV and the drama that comes with it. And Unreal uncovers all the juicy drama of what happens behind the scenes of their fictional reality show, Everlasting. I love this show. If you know about it, they've been building up for four seasons. This is the fourth, and they have brought back some crazy characters. It's like seeing what's going on really behind the scenes and being like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't have judged those reality stars show so harshly. You shouldn't have, Rob. Nah. My favorite part about it is that it's loosely kind of inspired by The Bachelor, and I love that because I love The Bachelor so much. I watch it all the time. I'm, uh, I'm kind of a secret Bachelor fan, and I've got something a little embarrassing to admit. Okay, you guys ready? I auditioned for The Bachelor. <gasps> I like sent them a tape, one of those audition tapes. It's so embarrassing. I hope no one ever sees it. That's so funny. Yeah. Okay. But if you guys want to see it, I guess I could show you. I brought it here today. You brought if you oh, watch yeah, it. I'd yeah, I'd love to there, see it. You guys yeah, okay I'd with that? You want to watch it? Yeah. All right. Maybe we, yeah. maybe we could show it, I guess, if you want. So if they have it, I don't know. Just like, don't judge me so harshly, but like, you know, check it out. I mean, maybe I could get discovered on it or something. My name is Rob. I'm a 30 fan. You know, I'm kind of um, in between. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneurial kind of guy. I do a lot of things, um, internet and stuff. Yeah, the last one was a while ago. I don't know if you could get one of those, like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids things to, like, shrink us. And then we'd kind of go down into, like, a, a diamond or something. Maybe we could have a dinner in there. You know, I, I would bring some animals out, tigers and stuff, and we could feed the tigers while we eat. I think I genuinely wanna, I get, I think marriage is, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think, I think, I think so. I think I could, I could be married um, at some point, and I think I'm gonna be ready if it happens. I might be ready to get, to get I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right? That and was I didn't, so good. I can't I believe it. on. I don't understand. What? You saw it. Come yeah. on. <laughs> I think you should have gotten cast. Yeah, I thought I would be like, you know, I could represent like the one guy who's like a little too sickly looking to be on the show, you know? Yeah. They, they, they don't have that role often. They should get a sick looking guy. Come on. Definitely. Come on. I, yeah, if you did that on the show, you would definitely win. See? You know, Rob, Bro. you were so vulnerable just then. Yeah. I gotta say, what? I have to come clean. I also auditioned for The Bachelor. What? Yeah, I can't believe that we both did it, but yeah. if you want, I'll show mine too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see that. I think everyone else here would too. Okay, <laughs> let's yeah. play it. Maybe we should watch. I'm Shannon, I'm old, and I'm a hoarder. My ideal partner definitely has eyes. I think eyes are just so attractive, especially when they're looking at you and you can see them and you're like, those are eyes. I have a good relationship with myself and now I'm looking for a relationship with another body that's alive. Well, fun story, um, I actually don't know any of my history because I was recently discovered completely abandoned in a field with no prior memories. <laughs> so I'm really interested in making some history that I'll be able to remember. My dream date definitely is a well-lit restaurant and um, there's just like lots of cameras and I'm super just well mic'd so people can pick up everything I'm saying and there's producers who have super prepped me so I don't have to worry about being myself. A fun fact about me is I don't know where I am right now and I'm really scared. Wow. <laughs> don't I'm, you think it's weird that I didn't get cast? <laughs> I'm really upset that you didn't get cast. That's just not yeah. fair. Uh, I'm just curious, like, what about everyone here? Would would you yeah. all, like, Would you guys want to be on a dating show? Would you? Like, is that not something right? you would want to do? Just clap if you would, yeah. would you? Right? right. Let's what? Actually, let's get someone come up. Come yeah. up. Who, who someone would... come up and talk about some dating shows. Anybody who wants to come, come up? up? Be a volunteer? Come up, or I'm going to date you long term, right now, Whoa, for life. you're afraid of that. You, sir. Oh, come on up, Come sir. on up. Oh, come on. Come on up. No one. 
someone, someone come up? Participate. Oh my gosh, this is just like us getting rejected for those reality dating TV it's shows. Exactly like it's that. rejection it's, everywhere we look. Oh, sometimes. That's so sad. Rejection just follows you around. It hurts and so just much. Chases you. Oh, like finally, a, hello. we oh, found hi, love. Sir. Hi, how are you? Hey, hi. come here. Come on over. What's your name? My name is Randy. Hi. Hey, Randy. So, would you love to be on a dating TV show? Yeah. It'll be nice. Yeah, right? It could yeah. be fun. Have you ever submitted to be on one? No. Oh, hang on. Oh. Hang on. One second. One second. Can we stop it? Guys, this is this is not going to work. I'm going to need I'm going to need you to cry. All right? We're trying to get numbers here. Do you have any idea what show this is? Can you cry on cue? Can you cry on cue? Can no. you cry on cue? No. Perfect. Yes. He's going to cry on cue. Uh, so here's what we need. I need real tears. Yes. I need them now. Let's oh. go ahead. We're going to try that again. Take it back. Let's yeah, do it again. Go ahead. And we're crying. Okay. We're crying. OK. So, okay. Uh, so who's your ideal mate? My ideal mate, uh, it's my pillow. Oh, no, that's so no. sad. Yeah, that's really oh, that's sad. so sad. I'm oh, but so I see sorry. The tears. I see the tears. There's one Oh, wow. Out. Those are moist eyes. Oh, wow. What an emotional moment. All right, there. stop. Stop the music. Stop the music. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hang on one second. Okay, here's the deal. I, great. Uh, Shannon, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Rob told me earlier in confidence that he doesn't like you. You don't belong on this show, and he thinks you're a terrible host. Incidentally, Rob, uh, Shannon says you look the way a broccoli fart smells. So go ahead. I want you. Oh, that makes you man. angry, right? We're angry, so let's go ahead. Let's be angry. Music back. We'll do the music again. We'll do that again. Let's go. Music, and we're angry this time. Go. So if you were ever hosting a show with a piece of trash, what would you do? Uh, uh, let me answer that for you. What if the host that was standing to the right of you was a big jerk with red hair, reddish brownish hair, and a plaid dress? How would you feel? Would you feel stupid or angry? You know, don't even answer. I want you to know that uh, the other person on the other side of you looks like a piece of rotten string cheese. <laughs> well, I mean, let me just answer this for you. Uh, what do you mean tell Shannon more? that she can go away, okay? Just walk away and go in a corner and just okay. be alone. Okay. 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 Just let's, go let's, away. You know, no, 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 this isn't. I got another idea. I got another idea. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I, I need. I, I don't care who. I don't care how this works. But one of you needs to kiss something right now. I need a hookup. We are trying to get numbers, okay. people. Numbers mean we get another season. Another season means we all have jobs. Know, so what we're gonna do? I just need you to look around the room. I don't care who it is. What it is? Kiss something. Somebody kiss something. We're doing it again with more kissing. Can we get more kissing? Here we go. All right, all right, you know what? Uh, tell you what, this has been a complete misfire. You are all terrible. Uh, none of you belong on this show. We're gonna send you home. Randy, you're amazing. Do you wanna host this show? Yes. Okay, we got a new host. He's gonna make out with the chair. You guys should get out of here. I'm gonna train Randy. Randy, come with me. Let me train you on how to be a host, and we'll thank you guys. Thank wow. you. Wow, okay, so we have been eliminated. I guess we're going home. We yeah. gotta go. Well, we're leaving, but you guys should all stick around because Constant Zimmer and Craig Bierko are next on Build. Woo! Check it out. Cheers. Gotta pack my bag. Yeah, close, thank you. Thanks everybody, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. For three seasons, Lifetime's Unreal has exposed viewers to the dirty underbelly of Bachelor-esque reality shows with its show within the show, Everlasting. Now, the show is back for its fourth and final season, this time on Hulu and just as unseemly as ever before. Let's take a look. Welcome to the wild, wild west version of Everlasting. Our very first Everlasting All-Stars. Well, couples will pair up each week. I choose Rodrigo. So unfair. You're a basic in a <laughs> You hypocritical <laughs> son of a And cut. I'm glad we're back. Me too. Everybody, please welcome Constance Zimmer and Craig Bierko. Let's Woo! hear it. Woo! Woo -hoo! More clapping, more clapping. More uh, guys, thanks so much for being here. I feel like you were just here for season three, not that long ago. You sound angry about 
I'm, I'm, I like less interviews to do. No, I'm very happy you're here. Uh, I know, well, happen? because it was, I mean, that season aired on Lifetime in, what month was it? Uh, it was 2008, I know that. <laughs> no, but that was season three had just finished, yeah. or we had just brought it out, and yeah, here we are now, like, Three months this, later. It was this year, right? It was right? this year, yeah. Right? So how did, were both these seasons shot at the same time? How did this happen? Yeah, we shot season three and season four back to back last year. Um, I, I don't exactly know why, but we did. And so by January of this year, we had finished already uh, season four, and we were doing press for season three, even though we had shot season three in February of last year. Wow. So yeah. There was just a hold up on, on season three coming out and you had already had season four essentially locked yes. in. So what is it like to be promoting the final season of this show, a show that I know both of you um, really love? It's not, it's not like any other show that you've done. I know you've liked other no. projects that you've been on. I but don't both think it's like any speak... other show that ever existed, yeah. really, but that's, look, that's looking at it from the inside of the fishbowl. But it's, it doesn't feel like any other show I've seen. Does it feel like it to you? No, I mean, look, we're like three shows in one, so yeah. that has definitely been something I've never experienced. What's the third one? There's, the, there's Everlasting, there's, there's, there's Unreal, and then... Well, and then there's Outside of Unreal. There's, oh, okay. Because yeah. there's the... I thought maybe there was a variety show I got <laughs> cheated out of. Yeah, there was the behind the scenes every night. That's we did true. it in the green room. That's you weren't true. there. That's well, there so was. Weird. <laughs> they <laughs> cut you all out of all the making of hey, documentaries I, 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 yes, for each of season. <laughs> uh, but I, th I do think that both of you have a kind of um, more so than most people have with their gigs. You have a sentimental uh, love for this show and for the family that you created on make while making it. Is that true? Well, yeah, because I think from the beginning, this show was a huge stretch for Lifetime, and they really wanted it to help rebrand the network, and we came out of the gates blazing, and we were unlike any show that they had ever had on their network, and we won a bunch of awards, and we had all these nominations, and so it was very exciting to be a part of something that I think we were in the beginning, had no idea really what it was or what the audience was, and were people gonna hate us because we were showing behind the scenes of reality television, And but I had always thought that the show needed to be benched. I always felt it was a show that you want to sit down and you get involved in that world and you just want to stay. Because I think when you get pulled out of it, you can start to tear it apart a little bit easier. Where if you just dive into it, you're kind of sucked into that world. And so I think for our fourth and final season, the fact that Hulu took it and dropped it all at once is really um, for the fans because it's what the fans have wanted all along. And I think... For us, it, it's exciting. I'm excited that people have seen the whole season, and I haven't even seen the whole season. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't binged it yet. No, I haven't even seen it all. Are you going to watch it? I, I, yes, I'm going to try to, but now I feel like there's this immediacy that I've got to know what everybody else has seen. The woman's also tired. You know, she's just done, I just found out that, well, I knew that you were going to do this, but she's on every other television series. <laughs> on television right now. It's, she's, you know, and they're very lucky. But you, you just did uh, House of Cards. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you're allowed to say that. That's a good thing then, because the sh <laughs> they... There's been other things you haven't been allowed to say uh, on that show. That's, that's right. right. Um, uh, but she, you've been busy and exhausted. Who has time to sit down and watch television? You've probably got a scene to shoot. Right, but right? we also just found out they were gonna drop all eight episodes at once, like, two weeks ago? Yeah. Wow. So we've been holding on to this secret. And they were just dropped earlier this week, right? Monday. Monday, yeah. yeah. Monday, like 6 a.m. Monday. I had people at noon that were already talking on social media saying, I only have one more episode to go. I was like, it's 12. I know. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> our, our, one, of our, one of our people in hair and makeup on Tuesday morning came in and was like, did you watch all of it? And I was like, it just came out yesterday. I'm, I'm, I have Farmers multiple shows that I have to watch early. right now, but right. I will watch all of it. Yeah. No, it's, it's exciting, and I do believe that it was everything that everybody kind of wanted this show to be. 
I, I, I actually agree with you because the first time I watched the show, the first season, I binged the first season. I think it was on Netflix or, you know, wherever it was at that time. And then afterwards, when I would be watching the show, I'd be watching it for interviews. So I would generally binge like the first six episodes that they would send me or something. And that always felt like the way to, to watch the show. The cliffhangers were so real. You kind of had to, you wanted to keep diving back in. So have you watched all eight episodes of this season? Have you? Yeah, no. Oh, snap! I you know, your reputation is you're the most well-researched. <laughs> you're the librarian. They call you the librarian. Do they really? No. No. Okay, no uh, one calls me anything. They will now. Maybe they will I, I now. I like to stick with that, that guy. That's, that's what they call me. Uh, no, I would like to. I love the first, uh, the first two episodes are wonderful. I just haven't had, I mean, it just dropped on Monday. Guys. I know, Give listen, me I know. Okay. Craig's only, Craig went straight to the ending. He just I, watched well, the last I did, episode. Well, I don't want, how do I do this? Because I don't know, you know, I don't want to be the spoiler, but there's a moment at the end mm. that um, uh, I was very curious about. Uh, it's, it's a matter of degree. Uh, Constance is, is such a, a delicate instrument that literally an inf a change of inflection will change the information that you are, you are given. And the meaning of a line can change from an insult to something loving, you know. That's what's so fun. That's why I always enjoyed, you know, doing scenes and stuff because you, you were skating with somebody you better be watching because you're, you're, you'll trip all over yourself if you don't listen. And so I, I was, even though I wasn't in this scene, I knew there was a moment that would certainly affect uh, the future of my character, but um, uh, it would all be in uh, a choice that Constance makes with the information that was delivered. And, um, and so I wanted to see that today. And uh, and it, it provoked a very strong reaction. We we well I, we I can't, I don't he wanna, can't tell oh. we I can I can show it to you. Show it. <laughs> That's a strong reaction. That is strong. So that is you very don't if you're strong. not ready to go. I'm do your stretches before you watch the show. No, it we uh, kept it, information from Craig. He I'm the only person that knows the real answer to the ending of the show. Why did you keep information from Craig? Well, because he's not so smart. <laughs> you don't want No, this it's also right. information that's kept from the audience. <laughs> it is kept from the audience. Yeah. I, I have a few I, I have a fairly strong, I can check it with you, and then you, you can, can say, you, check you don't have to, to confirm ask it. Me, ask me when we're not yeah, on camera. Yeah, when we're not camera. On, on camera, right. which is, I hope, never. But uh, but could you imagine a nightmare like that, not being on camera? <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, it's. I, I had a very strong feeling of what happened, and, uh, and, and either way, it would have provoked a very strong reaction. Yeah. Do you guys find your characters uh, exceedingly hopeless as the show progressed through each season? No, I mean it's I feel. Okay. I mean I'm no. not necessarily saying that, but are no. you asking as somebody who's watching or playing it? Because I think the pain of playing a character who's uh, is the more conscious you get, oh, the more the more you realize who, who you are, the p the more painful it is. But yeah. watching it as an audience member, you're just sort of oh, what a sucker. But yeah, I think, watching, our... I think as playing it, you would never be like my character's hopeless and go into doing a scene. Well, that would be plenty of times. <laughs> but I also think that we have to play these characters and uh, with hope because if we don't, what's the reason to keep watching them? I mean, listen, they're making crazy choices and they are doing insane things in a in a insane environment in a world, but. Um, no, I don't think they're hopeless. I just think they're a little misguided and misdirected. And so this final season, I think, was incredibly important to get them all to their deepest, darkest bottom so that they might rise from the ashes. It feels very like they become phoenixes at the end. I don't know. Is that moral too much? Fe moral phoenixes, if, if, if you I will. think certainly. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, not I, certainly the uh, <laughs> the, cent the two central characters the, 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 and the relationship that you are most involved with. Uh, yeah, I did get that feeling that these these are women who are going to cover for each. They're yin and yang. They're going to cover for each other's wounds and create something uh, better. Do than you think that they will create another? No, you haven't seen the ending. I know about it. 
Uh, yeah. There, there's no turning back. There's well, no turning there's, back. No, the but end. there are other. There. Well, there's there always mansions. other options. There's always other options for them. But I. And the guy who owned that place was an asshole. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. I mean, I I'm hope sure so. he's not watching this. <laughs> no. Let's hope he's not watching this. The guy who owned that actual house? Yeah. That's <laughs> all right. I have my own reasons, but that's all right. <laughs> they didn't, listen, we were filming in somebody's real house. Yeah. So really? you can understand that they got a little annoyed with our hours yeah. and our mess. For four seasons. Yeah, but yes. it's not like you just show up and say, these are the hours. You show up and you back a truck of money up that's and you true. dump it on their face. Yeah. It makes it a little easier. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. I've worked in locations before though, and when you give even when you back the truck of money up, they're still they still want to it's complain your home. and get upset. I totally you know what? Yeah. I joke about this man. I joke about the asshole, but uh he's uh, he actually I, I totally agree. If it was my home I live in a nice place. If I was to lay, let somebody come and film there because they are going to give you a lot of money, sure that's kind of nice. You make a lot of money and all you have to do is disappear for the day. But if there's one scratch, you're going to lose your mind. Yeah. Uh, so when you look back on the show now, four seasons, what? How do you feel about having played uh, this woman who is very conscious of feminism, very aware of women uh, in society and how they're perceived, and at the same time does not give a shit about it and wants to profit off of and exploit it entirely? I wouldn't say that's exactly her. I mean, of course she cares about she cares about women. She just has a funny way of showing it. But I think ultimately her she's fighting to be heard and she is definitely doing a man's job and she's doing it on her terms. Um, there are many contradictions to the question that I, pro exactly. I, I posed. Excuse me. No, but, yes. but I get. But it's. But it's. It's. I mean, we get that question a lot because obviously both our characters are feminists, and yet they are doing horrible things to other women for their own gain. And so it's this thing where they're really good at a horrible job, and at the same time they're fighting for their own feminist ideals but at the heart of it you know you have these two incredibly strong anti-heroes that are trying just as I mean they're doing everything they can in what they've been given and so I believe that you know this final season is really intense. It it we definitely cross some more lines. We're, they've never been afraid. The writers, I appreciate them and I applaud them so much for never being afraid to cross those lines because we've crossed them all the time. And this season needed to be a season where we needed to show everybody like we are aware of what we have done to other people for good television. Um, so now let's turn it on ourselves and see what have we learned and what has it done to us. And I think, and I don't know, I just feel that's what it felt like to me because these women are really pushed up against like the inside of a fishbowl. Like this is it. What do we do now? And we can't keep doing this. Um, I'm very proud of how much people have taken from these women when I was, you know, incredibly afraid of Quinn. I was afraid everyone was just going to hate her and take her at face value and not understand that she's got a lot of shit going on and she is just trying to do a good job. And, you know, being a woman in that position on that kind of show is a, a lot to try and hold on to and hold on to all your morals well i'm not sure she had a lot of morals left there well i think there, there's a storyline in this in this in this season uh and i don't want to give anything away where morals come into play and revenge comes into play in terms of in terms of their morals finally their morality comes out and they try to react and act a kind of vengeance upon someone and it doesn't go according to plan uh and in one could say that as much as these people maybe would want to do a good thing they don't have the tools morally to actually do a, the right thing, nor are they set up within the structures for which they live in to do the morally right thing. So no matter how much they try, 
they're they're constantly set up for tragedy. We also have to remember they're making a television show. I mean, the exactly. worse the drama, the better the show. I mean, that's what is so sad about society. It's like we are living in a time where it's almost the worse you treat somebody, the more acclaim you get for it. And there is no people are not. There's no I'm president. Yeah, I mean Sorry. it's. I mean it's it's true. So I do think there was a lot of that in this season. There's a lot of that in all of our past seasons. Is raising an awareness of a situation and talking about it. I mean, a lot. There is a storyline in this season that is loosely based on what happened or didn't happen on Bachelor in Paradise. You know, these things are stories that have been put in front of us, and then they just go away, and people forget about them, and realize that women on those shows, on those reality shows, are being treated horribly. And we're just showing you that there's people treating those women horribly. So, you know, this show has always been about behind the scenes of a reality television show, and that's our that's our base, and that's a crazy base to just even start from. And then you're trying to show you how all these people have all their own issues that they are trying to deal with, and all of their own parameters within a parameter of a show that is has none. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think your character is sort of suffers a, a bit of the same this season, where he kind of comes in and he's happy and he's in a good place and he's trying to live a better life, but the life that he has lived before will sort of not allow him that. Yes. I, I think, uh, I'm not sure I entirely understand uh, Chet's trajectory, and it's not, it isn't my job to completely understand that. It's just to fulfill each moment as well as I can. Like I said, having somebody, you know, that's uh, either in the passenger seat or the driving seat, depending on the, the scene. And I got to play most of my stuff with Constance answered it made those it made those larger questions unimportant because I don't recognize the Chet at the end of the show from the Chet that I was told I was going to play, uh, and and the Chet that I think existed in the first season. Well, you know, uh, 38, 40 hours of television. I think you would hope that, right? For your I character. think to a degree, yeah. but I think you know eventually in a life of a television series. MASH was one of my favorite shows. I say this, and all of the actors and writers were exceptional, but by the end of, you know, if you're going to present a four-year war over 11 years, something's going to thin out, and kind of by the end, it was also a different time. By the end, I felt like everybody was Hawkeye. And, um, but that wasn't what I felt. I, I felt uh, I was trending the other way. Uh, I... One of the things that I, I, I that was I tried to stay on top of, even if it wasn't written in the scene, is that this is this is a show about women who deserve to be in a certain position that men deserve to be in a, a position of power. Every bit make every the same money, make the same decisions, and in many ways, arguably, have a better facility for working more subtly and thinking more subtly. Why shouldn't they get that? It's a crazy. It's crazy that they don't. Hopefully, this show, even if it sparks a single conversation about how wrong that is, it's it's been worth. Uh, and my feeling is that machine needed a spark plug of the loyal opposition. And uh, for some reason, uh, Chet's healing, which was his sobriety and uh, and all of the and what and what he wanted to get and what he wanted to build and recognizing how much he loved this woman, um, it got harder for me to understand. As someone who is, I'm, I'm not like Chet, other than the fact that I talk too fast. But uh, I, I, I really, I, I had to do a lot of uh, research to find that. One of the greatest compliments I ever got on the set was it was an offhanded joke. Shiri, we were shooting like three o'clock in the morning, and Shiri said, "What are you on?" And it was three o'clock in the morning, and I realized my job is whatever energy is in the room. I'm opposing it. I'm com a lot of times, if you if you look at the scripts, I'm I'm opposing it. The energy is opposing it. Uh, I, I'm coming in with too much enthusiasm with a bad idea, and it sets 
the major characters. That's that's the fun of playing a, a character like that is you get to play those those faults and stuff like that. And I felt like some of that was skimmed off, and it made it a little bit more complicated to find that. And it changed the, for me. It changed the trajectory of the of the story, but. He's that, a bit more passive okay. and supportive this this I, season. Oh, I, I, it, in a way that I I didn't. It, it, I had to really, really work and find my way through that, and it was a challenge. I mean, it like I said, it's he not He changed my... for a woman, you know? Yeah. Women change all the time for men. This is true. And I think Chet is a representation of a man changing for a woman, which you don't see very often on television. That's true. Yeah. I also wonder if you're just like a decent guy and the writers were like, let's stop making Craig be such an I don't, asshole every I don't, episode. Uh, uh, some of it, <laughs> some of it, well, I, I am, I learned early on. Let's just give him a season of being decent. That's right. That's right. I don't think, I don't think that was it because I know we made a conscious choice in the fourth season. I did actually talk to, to Stacy, who was, Ruck was, who, who ran the third and was the third and fourth season who had this great open door policy. So I took advantage of it just with questions and saying, I don't understand, I don't understand like what, where this is coming from. I know he loves her, that's, that's, I understand that. But all of his instincts for 50 years have led him into a very dangerous, precarious place in his life. Where does all of that go? Does all of that go into love and clear thinking? And thinking that going out into a golf course that that's ever going to work, you know, and that was that was my job was to reconcile that and find my own reasons for it. I'm sure, you know, this is a very nice human being. I've never heard her speak caustically to anybody. Now, if you've only know her through the show, it's hard to imagine her any other way than the way you see her on the on the show. By the way, this is like going to be the last time maybe we appear publicly together. Oh, so oh. If, it, I, I, if it's worth saying, what a ride and how grateful I am. Don't make me cry. Uh, no, make her cry. Make no, her cry. No, no, no. Good crying. TV. Good She's TV. Crying. She doesn't experience human emotions. I wouldn't worry. No. <laughs> I, I, what, what, what a ride. And also what a and not only a what great was actress. favorite but, moment with her? <laughs> uh, don't say having sex over my desk with the dog watching. Because that would be crude. <laughs> um, oh, happened. I don't know. No, it I happened. Think. It's real. It, it happened on the show. The it was dog the first was episode. watching us pretend have sex on camera. I, I yeah, she's scarred. Look at her. <laughs> she used to she used to be full of life, bounding around. She's so Living depressed. Living that trauma right uh, now. Go ahead. Sorry. I I I I really I, you know first of all I'm not one of those like favorite movie guys. I like The Godfather. It's my fa then I'd go Apocalypse Now and I'm not going to sleep all night or you know this is a this I felt so lucky to be working with 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 Shiri who I've known for a long time and Constance who I've known for for a while too. Uh but not in the same context and and uh, and the people I got to meet along the way but especially Constance, because that's where my character's heart lived. And um, uh, I felt a great deal of, I can't pick a specific moment, I'm sure if I thought about it, and you'll read the book, there'll be some great ones, and you might want to lawyer up. But uh, no. I was just trying to milk those <laughs> tears, that's all. I, I, I really, and I, I think I said this a lot. I, I would walk into a scene with no idea, realize, oh my God, I don't have to have an idea, that's sometimes that's the most dangerous thing. Uh, I know actors, uh, it, it, one actress in particular, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, maybe. But I, but I was in a, uh, playing a part in a movie. Hey, that this is about ago, me, not about Sarah would, Jessica would, Parker. See? See what happens? Just, uh, <laughs> no, just, but it, it comes back to you in a big way. Great. It's a great compliment. Because she would read have, a book. We have hours she'd read, time a, she'd read a book between <laughs> shots. And then they'd say action, and she'd drop the book and look at me, and I go, "How boring could I possibly be that you're reading, you know?" And she said, "No, I just don't want to make any smart choices before, you know. I don't want to think too much. I want to be present." And I drove everybody crazy. I always had something that I was, I was a, a piece of clay or a drawing book, and it was. I don't know how to read. So I would always have something to do, and I eventually worked it into his, uh, because I wanted to make sure that, and it was scary sometimes, because I didn't know what she was going to come at me with, and also, I was never really in the power position in these scenes, which is, can be threatening for a always guy. Just a character, always and I wanted to put my, I, yeah. 
Well, I wanted whatever was caught on film, if, if, if the slightest reaction to not have been thought out to strike the men who were watching and the women who were watching, but we had a sizable male audience to, to strike it as, oh, I've been, I've been, had that said, and I, I went completely blank too, because it, and, and that was, some, I would say if the, it was that kind of a moment that I really cherished, and which is very rare. And I'll miss a lot, because that comes with being a great artist, which I think you are. Oh, I thought we were still talking about Sarah Jessica Parker. No, I'm just kidding. I'm saying. kidding. I think she's it's a, great, it's a, too. It's a, it's a blurry line. Like, you know, if no, you, I think she's Constance, great, too. If he uh, takes his glasses off, I look a lot like Sarah Jessica Parker. Well, let me just say this about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have to go to audience questions, but we haven't really talked about uh, Sherry Appleby's kind of makeover uh, this season, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, she's she, so brave. She... <laughs> that I, I, you know, this. I, I hope this doesn't sound uh, misogynist, but like the the way that her makeover is the type of woman that I would run f for the hills from. No, I would see her and I would go fucking crazy. I'm out of here. Well, that was she the point. She plays it beautifully. Yeah, well, that was see. the whole point. It's is the beginning. To, of the it's to just kind of show that she has tried everything else. And now she really is just going to dive into trying to become the sutress and do everything the girls that she has been managing, like manipulating to be, she's going to now do that for herself and see if she can find true love or she can find a man to marry. And that's why it's... And by the way, it was a very, that first episode was so weird for both of us because both of us didn't look anything like our characters. So we were in scenes together and we would be like, who are who are you? Like The, the top of this season really throws the audience yeah. through a loop in terms of coming back to these characters because you, your character as well, as we said, you are coming back to three characters who have kind of completely remade themselves in, in some way. It was also like Will and Grace. You haven't seen these people for 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of looked at it like a reboot. Like well, these other like, series from we came It was just supposed to show that we were all coming back with a new, a new vision, yeah. and nobody's vision was the same. And you know, that's therein lies the conflict, yeah. and conflict is good television. And you know, I think it's why also you know Quinn is finally has a line in this season. She has a line, and Rachel crosses it. And I think it was nice to sh be able to show that when a show is over to show that these women did have limits um, and they get to those places in this final season. But yeah, she's a, she's a hot mess. Yeah, that's exactly the... Uh, yeah, the, the <laughs> oddness that you're... It's a, it's a slow... I didn't understand it either uh, and thought it was going to be played mainly for comedy. I started making fun of her a lot. And I don't know how much of the stuff they used, but, but they... But they but, uh, it, it it what I realized because I see in the in the last she's percolating she's building up to a slow boil, which you can see. I mean, you can see a, an actor playing someone who's playing someone who's playing someone, and that's where all of this tension. I lies want twin Emmys for that. both of these people, or I'm leaving the Academy. And I want to mention that I'm not in the Academy. <laughs> don't invite me in the Academy. Don't bother. Uh, questions from the audience. What do we got here? Right here. Or wait, who? Uh, right here, okay, yeah. and then you, sorry. How accurate would you say Everlasting was compared to um, like the behind the scenes of The Bachelor? I mean, we, we have been told from other reality producers that we should call our show real because it is so <laughs> close to the truth. And I had actually a producer tell me um, on Monday that they read Bachelor Nation, that book, and they said it was crazy because I read the book and I was like, this is unreal. This is actually what the, we've been showing on our show. And also one of our creators, Sarah Gertrude Shapiro, actually worked on the Bachelor, Bachelorette franchise for three seasons, I believe. And so it's, listen, it's a television. Everything on television is an exaggerated version of the truth, but you can, I think it's safe to say that, yes, a lot of it is unfortunately true. And she is uh, quite literally burning something out of her system <laughs> with this show. I mean, I, that's, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, next one right here. Hey. Um, so first I want to say congratulations on a successful season. It was amazing. I binge watched all of yesterday, so <laughs> still recovering. Thank you. That. Maybe you can Good tell morning. us. Yeah, <laughs> tell us. Yeah. It was fantastic. Um, but my question is for Constance. I wanted to know, since Quinn is such an empowering woman, which woman empowers you the most? I mean, right off the bat, without thinking about it, I it's I waver in between Beyonce and Oprah. 
I, which is crazy. I just, she's the first person that came to my mind. Um, and, but it's also, I don't, it's funny, it changes a lot based on where I am in my life. And I feel like right now there's also like, you know, the kids from Parkland that are also incredibly empowering as kids. Um, but I don't know, I just, for, I don't even know Beyonce, you know, and it feels very generic to say that. No, but would, like me, would you like to meet her? I just, would you like to meet her? I, w I would, okay. I would. I'll work that but I don't know, she's doing something with her femininity that I have not seen another woman do. And that's why I, then I also have to say Oprah because Oprah has the, like, the other side of it by having a lot of these interviews and showing compassion and having, you know, these talks of, how, like with Deepak Chopra and raising awareness of two people and authors that I don't think a lot of us would have known about had she not sat down and had these conversations and so those are women who i who i look to i don't know if that's a horrible answer no, not at great. all that's a great answer i don't know uh i think we have time for one more hi 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 um so why do you think quinn finally had that line and she grew to like she grew throughout the seasons but rachel never did wait when do i say that do I say she, that? I think she meant the line that you can't she, cross, oh, right? Is that oh, what you mean? Oh, why do I yeah. think that I had that line? Yeah. Well, I do think it is because of... Uh, have you have you seen the season? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I'm, can't spoil stuff. It's out everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What I do you think, think? Oh, whatever. I, I feel bad, but it's already out. I mean, everyone's talking about it. But I think that because Quinn becomes pregnant, it actually is what gives her the line that she's not willing to cross. And I think she realizes how responsible she is for creating the monster that Rachel has become. But it wasn't on Quinn's terms. It's like she went further than Quinn would have ever gone or ever thought Rachel had the ability to do. And with this new awareness now of like having a baby and her having gone to a place that she can't come back from, I know that Quinn knew in her heart that if she left her, she would fall. So, but she had to leave her because if she stayed there, she'd be enabling it, right? It's like, it's, it's an addict. And so I had to leave her to her own demise and her own pretty much failure um, so that she would understand what she was missing. Oh, congratulations on four seasons of great television, you guys. Thank you. I hope there can be another show where the two of you are on it, and hopefully Sherry as well. I mean, that would be, you know, we'd be, we were on Boston Legal together, too. That's right. So we've already been on two shows together. There's Third's the charm. Third, there was almost a third, and I will tell you about it backstage. Oh. Can you tell us about it? What, what, I, no? I, I will tell you backstage okay. because I can't. Oh, fair enough. Oh, interesting. Uh, and Unreal is uh, currently on Hulu. All of the episodes from all of the seasons are on Hulu right now. But yeah. more importantly, I think most people have seen the first three seasons. They should binge watch the fourth. And if you've already done it, binge it again and give a big round of applause for Craig Bearcoat and Kathy oh, Let's you. hear it. Hi, Mom.